G'day fellas and welcome to a video where we talk about 13 insane new Byzantine mechanics that are coming in this brand new expansion for Age of Empires 4. We'll cover things like olive oil, the cistern system and the brand new mangonel emplacement. So first up we're going to be talking about olive oil, the brand new resource available to the Byzantines and only the Byzantines in Age of Empires 4. There's a number of different ways that you can get olive oil, but the most common way that you're going to be seeing it is going to be through their unique farm, which is called the Olive Grove. Whenever you drop off any food that's been collected from the Olive Grove, you're going to be dropping off olive oil with it. Now, I'm sure you might be wondering, what do you do with olive oil? Is it used to grease up my axles on my siege? No, it's actually used to purchase mercenaries. So with the Byzantines, you've got access to a unique building called the Mercenary House. And in the Mercenary House, there are three different types of contracts that you can have access to. Each one has different units within it. As an example, you can get the Western Mercenary Contract that's got the Longbow, the Landsknechte, and the Streltsy. Or you can get the Eastern Mercenary Contract, which has got the Keshik, the Gulam, and the Tower Elephant. And these mercenaries come in groups. So as an example, you can get five Longbows uh, for 450 olive oil. It's a pretty decent discount and a mechanic that is definitely going to be taking quite a bit of time to get used to, even for the most skilled players. Number two, it's fire. There are so many different units that have got access to fire as the Byzantines. The most common one that you're going to see is the Kairosophon. The Kairosophon is the unique ram replacement for the Byzantines. It's a little bit more expensive. You're paying a little bit of gold, but this bad boy, when it gets unleashed upon the enemy buildings, throws down fire and any units from the enemy that stand in that fire are going to be suffering some third degree burns at the least. On top of that, the ram doesn't deal with pathing issues like the main ram does for all the other civilizations because it's got a bit of range on it. And that, in my opinion, sets this ram apart from everything else. On top of that, you've also got access to unique technologies for the trebuchet. And because of that, it means that the trebuchet is in a whole nother league when it comes to the Byzantines. Greek fire projectiles increases the damage and also engulfs the target in fire. So what you can do is you can focus your trebuchets behind the enemy keeps and prevent them from actually repairing the keeps up. This puts the trebuchet on a whole different level for the Byzantines. Number three, it's the Pilgrim Flask. The Pilgrim Flask is a unique ability that your Byzantine military units will gain if you age up to the castle age with the Cistern of the First Hill. This landmark gives all of your military units, except for Siege, a special activatable ability that allows them to regen health. It's a huge amount as well, 25 health per second for 10 seconds, a total of 250 health, which means that it can take your units, if they're sitting down on one, two, three health, all the way up to full. And on top of that, you can use it while you're in battle. That means that while you're taking damage from your enemy, you're healing at the same time and it really forces the enemy to focus down your units individually. If they don't do it, it increases your chance of victory significantly. The fourth insane new mechanic for the Byzantines is from the Cataphract. This unit has the ability to charge, but it is not like any other charge we've seen before. Instead, it tramples area effect damage as it charges towards a point which you pick with your cursor. This allows the Cataphract to bypass things like units that are standing in front of a mangonel or a springled or any other high value target guarantees that they get on top of it and that they can begin damaging it immediately on top of that any of the units that they trample past while they're they're heading in that way they also inflict with a debuff which increases the amount of damage that those units receive for 12 seconds by 20 percent it is absolutely absurd how crazy this unit is and i can't wait to share it with you guys the fifth unique mechanic for the Byzantines that is absolutely insane is the Cistern mechanic. This mechanic is so complicated, it's going to get a video just for itself alone. That's how complex it is. But to give you a little bit of a breakdown, there's two main components to it. Number one is that the Cistern provides an area of effect bonus to villagers that work nearby it. That's a huge bonus of up to 25%. On top of that, it can also influence buildings in the area and can boost their production speed, their research speed, or reduce the amount of damage they take from enemy units. While it's a complicated system, once you get your head around it, it's easy to implement in your games. The sixth insane Byzantine mechanic that is brand new to Age of Empires 4 is for their unique unit called the Limitanite. 
The Limitonite is the Spearman replacement for the Byzantines. It costs a little bit more food, but only costs 10 wood, which is great if you want to spam it. But that's not the reason why we're highlighting it here. The reason why we're highlighting it is because it has the ability to enter into a shield wall, which allows it to take reduced ranged damage. On top of that, when it takes reduced ranged damage, it has the ability to move back into its standard form, regaining its speed and regaining its attack speed, which it loses when it enters those modes. What's gonna, what you're going to see happen at the top level are players that are going to be stance dancing, which means that they're going to be running into battle, holding their spears ready to go, and then at the last second, they'll be switching to shield wall once they're on top of their enemy, and as the enemy tries to kite them away, then they'll be looking to try and get back uh, into their standard stance and then switch it back into the shield wall. It's a new mechanic. I think it's going to have a lot of potential at the high level and it's going to take a lot of work to master. The seventh unique mechanic for the Byzantines is from the Varangian Guard. This unit is the Man at Arms replacement for the Byzantines. However, it comes with a twist. It has a unique ability that allows it to put down its shield and take up a second weapon, increasing its damage. However, significantly reducing the amount of armor it's got. This is an interesting trade-off because it means that units that have got higher amounts of damage aren't really going to notice it, whereas units that have got low levels of damage are going to definitely deal a lot more damage to the Varangian Guard. So this is something that's going to take some time to master and learn as a Byzantine player exactly when you want to be playing your cards with this one. The eighth new mechanic to the Byzantines that is absolutely insane comes from their Age 4 landmark, the Foreign Engineering Company. This landmark allows you to use your olive oil to purchase foreign siege weapons. One of the weapons you can purchase is the Hui Hui Pao, which for anybody unfamiliar with it, is the 18 range trebuchet. This thing is ludicrous and was previously only available to the Mongols through an RNG system. Basically, you had to roll and you, were, you got what you were given. The difference with the foreign engineering company is that you can choose to have the Hui Hui Pao and you can choose to have it right now. You can get 10 of these bad boys in a game, no problem. And that's what makes this mechanic crazy. The ninth insane mechanic for the Byzantines is rather simple, but it starts to add up over the course of a game. And that is stone from absolutely nothing. Every single time you construct a building as the Byzantines, you're going to be receiving a small amount of stone. Now, depending on the size of the building that you create, it depends on how much stone you actually get from it. It might not seem like much initially, but over the course of the game, this can add up to thousands upon thousands of stone that you're going to receive just for, just for living your life as a Byzantine, mate. And that's absolutely fine with me. Number 10 on the insane list of brand new Byzantine mechanics is once again going to the Varangian Guard. This unit has the ability to train or create in the same way that you would normally create a battering ram, a transport ship. That is correct. This unit can walk up to the water. You right click or left, left click the transport ship button, place that bad boy down on the shoreline. You don't ever have to build a dock. No one even knows that you're there and into the night you go on your transport ship and over to foreign lands to, I, I guess, do Varangian guard things. The 11th insane new mechanic for the Byzantines is called Acritoid Defenses. It's a skill that you can use from your system as early as the Dark Age and allows your villagers to turn into absolute monsters. It takes them from being just standard villagers and increases their armor by plus two, both melee and ranged, and also increases their attack. It means that whenever you're dealing with raids from an enemy or even a big attack that's coming in, you can hit this bad boy and your villagers turn into demons. The 12th insane mechanic for the Byzantines comes in the form of a unique technology called Expilatores. This technology is available in the Feudal Age and affects horsemen. Not only does it increase the amount of damage that your horsemen do against enemy workers so that they can 5 hit them, it also allows your horsemen to collect a 20 gold bounty for every single villager that they kill. This has got great synergy with things like their landmark, the Imperial Hippodrome, which acts as a stable, so automatically out of the gate you're able to get horsemen out on the field and then get this technology immediately after and look to try and gain that gold. It also means that you don't even have to consider gold as an option in the early game as long as your rating is good enough. This is a great technology and I expect it's going to see a lot of play at the professional level. 
The 13th and final insane unique mechanic for the Byzantines is the Manganel emplacement. The reason why this emplacement is absolutely ludicrous is not only because it is the first time we're seeing it, but it is because it is a scalable area of effect attack. What that essentially means is that any big team game, any FFA, you're going to be able to put outposts down and you're going to be able to spam these bad boys without having to worry about your population. What makes it extra crazy is it means that you can pull off defenses in the castle age with this emplacement without risk of losing it to something like a springled attack or a potential snipe from any enemy cavalry. Well, that rounds out the list of the 13 brand new, most insane Byzantine mechanics. Which one do you think was the most insane? For me personally, I like Akratoi Defense just simply because it allows you to play into two town centers and know that if your enemy tries to punish you, you're always going to have that to fall back on. If you haven't already, make sure you check out the Sultan's Ascend on Steam. I'll leave a link in the description of where you can pre-order it. And of course, we'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.